What's up everyone, it's Mark from Silence Tech. I hope you're all keeping well. I wanted to make a beginner's tutorial on all the tweaks you can do to make your NVIDIA GeForce RTX 50 series card run at peak performance. I want this video to be straight to the point, but before we start, I need to show you the exact card I'm using for testing. This is the Aorus Master GeForce RTX 5080. The overall appearance is very sleek. Once in place, the card will fill up even the largest cases out there. Its total length is 36 centimeters wide and 15 centimeters in height and it will take up three PCIe slots. Personally, I hate a card that's too small, dwarfed by the whole system. This RTX 5080 Master is a real statement piece. It will match any build as it's plain black. The LED lights around the card look very vivid and uniformed. There are three fans underneath with a flashing RGB effect that wouldn't look out of place at a rave. Anyway, let's set this monster up for peak performance. First of all, you will need to go and download the latest video drivers from Nvidia's website. A link will be in the description. If you're swapping out an old card, be sure to download Display driver uninstaller. After that has been installed you need to boot into safe mode by going to Windows settings then Windows update, advanced options, recovery then hit advanced startup. From there you can find safe mode and boot into Windows. Once you're at your desktop it's time to start uninstalling your old drivers. Installing an NVIDIA driver is pretty simple and straightforward these days. Just do a clean installation. If you require audio for any of your display ports or HDMI ports, install HD audio. If not, just leave it unchecked. Once your driver is fully installed, we have some setting up to do. Firstly, your BIOS has some key settings that need to be changed. XMP should be enabled. You don't have to do any timing or voltage adjustments. Don't worry, you just need to turn XMP on and that's it. Higher memory speeds make a massive difference to Windows and games, especially on Ryzen. Next, there's 4G encoding and resizable bar. Both need to be turned on. After you've saved out of your BIOS, you need to check Task Manager to see if XMP has been turned on. You're also able to check the status of resizable bar by simply opening up the NVIDIA control panel, selecting system information and scrolling down. Resizable bar support should say yes. Just that alone will give you a nice bump in performance. Please note, older GPUs may need their BIOS reflashing to a latest update um, just for a resizable bar to work. Some more Windows settings, be sure to turn on hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. With my RTX 3080 Ti, this setting once activated caused stuttering and had no benefit whatsoever. With the RTX 40 and 50 series, however, this setting is needed to use DLSS 4 frame gen, so definitely keep this turned on. All other Windows settings related to gaming I just left off. In the NVIDIA app, go to graphics and change every game you have installed to run the latest version of DLSS 4. This will make sure upscaling, frame gen and ray tracing are all using the latest versions. This makes a big difference to upscaling quality and has really helped my games show less artifacting when using frame gen. The version that game developers offer are usually outdated so make sure to run latest for every game you own. Now let's take a closer look at NVIDIA's control panel. Check your resolution settings first, set your monitor to its native resolution. For refresh rate, pick the highest you can go. For colour settings, I personally recommend setting RGB, 10-bit if your monitor supports it, and an output range of full. If you have a G-Sync monitor, you can turn on Adaptive Sync here. Lastly, in managed 3D settings these days, I generally don't change much. Even prefer maximum performance yields less performance than just keeping it on the normal default. I know it's strange, right? But test it yourself. If you want to use G-Sync correctly, V-Sync should be turned on as it adds very little latency when combined with NVIDIA's Reflex Low Latency in-game. You can turn on Low Latency in the NVIDIA control panel, but that has mixed results when using it. Reflex, which you will find in-game, is much, much better. And that's it really now for the NVIDIA control panel. Okay everyone, I'm going to give more of an overview of this Aorus Master GeForce RTX 5080. After that, it's all about overclocking for peak performance. This particular RTX 5080 can be picked up in either black or white, retailing for around 1500 US dollars or 1300 UK pounds. All RTX 5080s have 16GB of VRAM and I have noticed it holding the card back in certain games with path tracing, causing games to crash if the settings are pushed too far in 4K. I do feel this card is at risk of suffering from not having enough VRAM in newer games. To be fair, it's mainly Indiana Jones that causes the crashing issues. Games like Cyberpunk I can max out no trouble at all, but my VRAM is basically around 14.5 to 15 gigabytes plus range, so Nvidia are cutting it very fine here. 
Moving on to MSI Afterburner, an overclocking software that's been around for a very long time. I always use Heaven Benchmark in conjunction with it to test the limits of my GPUs. At stock speed, the Aorus Master RTX 5080 can boost all the way from the reference 2617 MHz to 2805 MHz. While using MSI Afterburner, I managed to add an extra 200 on the core, resulting in an overall boost clock of over 3100 MHz. I haven't seen a card overclock this well in a while, resulting in a nearly 10% performance increase. Undervolting is a great way of running a lower voltage to keep the card cooler, which results in more consistent boost clocks. This RTX 5080 card didn't seem to yield any advantage during this at all. The card runs so cool in my system, even with my manual overclock enabled, resulting in very stable boost clocks that never moved that much at all. Undervolting didn't result in a more stable boost clock, nor was it longer sustained. Due to an already super cool temp from the RTX 5080 Master, it's around the 50 to 60 Celsius range. River Tuner, which comes with MSI Afterburner, is a great way to monitor your system temps, current FPS, frame times, and much more. I won't go into how to set this up because that's a whole tutorial in itself, but this software gives vital information and can help you diagnose why a game isn't running correctly. You can also use its frame capping option to really help smooth out frame times by limiting potential spikes and drops in FPS. I decided to add some benchmarks in this video on five of the most demanding games I could throw at this RTX 5080 just so people had data to compare their current RTX 5080 performance. All the results are at 4K with my previous overclock settings I've just mentioned. Let's check them out. Okay everyone, that's the end of today's video. I really hope it helps someone set up their 50 series card. I tried to cover every single step so they could achieve peak performance. On a side note guys, I have loads of awesome videos planned. One is going to be an RTX 5080 time lapse build. Super excited, it's going to be a Gigabyte Corsair build and I also have a 4K Ultra HD 240Hz QD OLED gaming monitor. God, that is just, that's not even the model number. I might as well put the model number in as well. Um, arriving from MSI, it's the monitor where you can bend the screen back and forth. Bend your screen back and forth. I'm gonna have to use that song. No, I can't. Uh, yeah, and I've also got an RTX 5090 coming from MSI, which I'm also super excited about. So there's gonna be loads of content, guys. Let's go. My name's Mark from Silence Tech. I shall see you all very soon, guys. Goodbye.